Hi guys and gals, this is Matt Sumstein and this is the introduction to the 2012 Aloha Clinic training tapes. This introduction will be placed in front of the helmet video section of the tapes and I have it there because I want to discuss a few things before we get into that. First of all, these are training tapes. If you don't agree with what is said on the tape, just defer to your association or talk amongst your, your managing group and figure out how you want to handle it. These are discussion topics. Secondly, I see a lot of hits that are being called now that didn't used to be called, but I'm not seeing many players removed from games. In fact, the only time I see a player disqualified is if there's actually a punch thrown. Well, in the book, a flagrant foul is described as so severe or extreme in nature, it places the opponent in danger of serious injury. I believe that a lot of these illegal helmet contact fouls also fall under the category of flagrant. So we're going to discuss the possibility of at least opening up the thought process for disqualifying some of these players who are delivering the worst of the flagrant hits and causing serious injury. The next thing I'd like to discuss is the helmet off rule. The new rule in the National Federation coincides with the new rule this year in NCAA that if a player loses his helmet during play other than the ball carrier, play will continue and after the play that person will be removed from the game for one down and treated as an injured player. I would like to see your association consider taking it a step further and following the NCAA guideline that if your helmet comes off during play other than the runner which will end the play that you cannot further participate in the play other than the immediate continuing action that you're currently involved in. This will prevent some serious injuries. Also, it will treat the player who lost a helmet as a defenseless player and he can no longer be hit. With those things said, I think we're ready for the helmet discussion, so enjoy the video. This is the 2012 Aloha Clinic training video on helmet plays. The first play has the potential to be a helmet hit, but it's not. It's just a good, clean hit, and a very hard hit. It doesn't mean you can't have an injured player on this play, but that's just part of football. This is great coaching. He gets his shoulder into the chest, knocks the guy out. I like this replay because you can see that it's so hard, the guy's mouthpiece just flies out of his mouth. Anyway, good job for not calling that. Play number two is a little swing pass out to the left, and at the last minute, the runner ducks down as he sees the defender coming in. And I believe the defender has a good position. He's trying to get his head to the side. He's trying to get low on the guy, and the runner just ducks to brace for that contact. This is the kind of play where you do have some helmet contact. I don't believe it's a foul. I just think it's incidental. There's no intent there. But you will need to talk to your association and discuss this type of play. Play number three. This is a defenseless player, but it is a clean block. And when I say defenseless player, I mean a guy that's in pursuit, but he doesn't see the blocker coming. And the NCAA has adopted that as a defenseless player. You'll see the tackler coming in here. Number eight in the lower right-hand corner has a decent angle on him, gets him in the side at the shoulder, blows him up. Hard hit but a clean hit and a nice job to stay off of it. Play number four is another example of a defenseless player. And this one we do get helmet to helmet contact on. And you'll see as the uh, returner gets the ball, there's a blocker who's coming down and he's got a real eye on this player in red. And that's his target area. If he gets anywhere in there at the waist or even up to the lower part of the shoulder, he's fine and he can pick his position. But he picks a position high with his helmet, drives his helmet into the pursuer's helmet, and this is a very dangerous and illegal play. I think when you got a defenseless player out in the middle of the field like that, he doesn't see it coming and the blocker has the choice of target and he targets the head that you need to consider a disqualification. Play number five, an illegal helmet contact was called at the end of the play, so a dead ball variety. And you'll see that the action is fairly quick and had the helmet not been involved, this timing is okay and not considered a late hit. 
Also, the right guard here does a nice job of holding. I just put that in there because it's interesting and we have time to talk about that. And as the runner comes around, you can see that he's getting hit and he's just about to start going down. Player highlighted in red is the one that dips down with his head, lowers his crown, and the contact hits the runner on the ground, helmet to helmet. It's a good call for an illegal helmet contact. And you can see as the defender goes down, not only does he hit the helmet of the player who's on the ground, but he drives his helmet into the ground. It's a dangerous position to be in, and that's why we have to be so diligent about calling these. There's a lot of their success has been. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first yes, down. You just saw that call. Play number six. Now, as we get more involved in helmet contact, there's going to be some that we mess up. We're defaulting on the side of safety. And you can see the act of the defender was to lower the crown of his head and to lead with it. Now he misses the ball carrier, so it's not technically a foul. But the official saw him lower his helmet. He thought he got him, so he threw the flag. That's the correct mechanic, and it's just going to be a casualty of war until we get some of these actions taken out of the game. Play number seven. Similar, but not the same. This is a quarterback, and he's not a stationary quarterback. He's rolling out, so he gets a little bit less protection. As he's rolling out, gets rid of the ball, and he's being hit from behind at the same time, which drives him down slightly. But that does not excuse our philosophy when in doubt it's a foul. So even though I don't think it was the defender's intent, but because there was a high-speed helmet collision, even though it was glancing, it was called illegal helmet contact, and correctly so by philosophy. By a poor cash, as we mentioned. They don't make Personal poor cash foul, illegal helmet the way they used to. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, replay second down. Illegal. Play number eight is a call for illegal helmet contact, and it's the second defender in on the receiver, which is why I like this play so much, because it means somebody was watching. You can see he's tied up, and the second guy comes in. Again, I don't think it's an intentional... Uh, helmet hit, I think he's trying to get low, but he leads with his helmet, he ducks his head, and he gets him helmet to helmet, and that's definitely an illegal helmet contact foul. Personal foul, illegal helmet contact on the defense. 15 yard penalty, result of the yardage is a first down. Play number nine is not a direct helmet to helmet play. But it is a defenseless receiver, and the defender has time to recognize that this is an incomplete pass, and he takes the extra act of creaming the guy. Now, there is some helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, but it's whiplash, so it's a secondary act. And the defender does lower his head slightly, but the foul is he has an opportunity to let up. It's clear that the ball is incomplete. He can see it. He's got good vision, and he takes those extra steps and lays into the receiver. So that's a personal foul. Play number 10. Big hit, but it's a legal hit. And we're trying to decipher between what is legal and what is not legal. That's one of those plays where you might get drawn into it for a targeting. But this is a clean hit. He leads with his shoulder. He targets the center of the body right here. And it's just a big hit and a legal hit. Play number 11. This is a hit on a quarterback and the defender has a clean look at him. The quarterback still has the ball. There's no problem with hitting the quarterback. It's just how the quarterback is hit. Dips the helmet. The helmet hits the quarterback first. He lowers it. It's right into the quarterback's chin. So this is an illegal helmet contact foul against number 69 of the defense. Play number 12, this is a hit on a defenseless receiver. Now the defender does get low, and we need to focus on the incoming deep defender in order to pick this up. Defensive pass interference was called incorrectly, but as the defender comes in, he is obligated to keep his helmet up, and he dips it down, and the first contact is with the crown of his helmet on the receiver's helmet, and he is in control of his position at that time. So that's illegal helmet contact. Play number 13, there's two things wrong with this play. Number one, it's a defenseless receiver, and the ball is clearly beyond him. 
And number two, the defense leaves his feet in order to create a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. And you can see 84 gets up. He's shaken up. He's injured. Ball's gone. And then the leap, helmet to chin. That's a personal foul for illegal helmet contact. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. So penalty. Play number 14. This is a long pass and a hit on a quarterback, which is two things, late and helmet to helmet. You can see it's a pretty spectacular incomplete pass, lots of bouncing around with the ball. But watch the defender coming in. Unmolested, nobody's messing with him, quarterback lets it go, and he intentionally lowers his helmet and hits the quarterback in the chin. Potential injury, possible concussion as a result of that, He's got the clear look and the choice of target spots, so that's a consideration for a DQ. Play number 15. Hit on the quarterback. Again, a deliberate hit on the quarterback. And again, the timing's not all that bad, but the location of the hit is horrible. So go back and watch the defender coming in. He's not blocked. He's got a clear shot. Helmet to helmet. You have to consider a DQ on this because... The defender has his choice of targets on a stationary, defenseless player where he lowers his helmet directly in to the quarterback's helmet. Play 16, and I know we're getting into a lot of conversations about opening up the possibility for disqualifications, but look at this play. There was a defensive pass interference called incorrectly. What should have been called was the illegal helmet call for targeting. You can see that the guy pushes in an upward direction off of the ground. He's looking at nothing but the receiver's helmet, lowers the crown, and puts it into the chin of the receiver. So again, it opens up dialogue. Is that a disqualification hit? I think it needs to be considered. I mean, lowers the helmet right into the face of the receiver. He's doing nothing but choosing his spot. So the flagrant foul definition hits so severe in nature, an illegal hit that is, that opens up the possibility for a serious injury. You can see in this case both helmets come off of these guys, but the hit is what I'm concerned with. And we discussed helmet off and how we're going to handle that this year, and that's going to be completely up to your association as to whether or not you let these guys participate. But go back to the initial contact, receiver, defenseless, upright, lowers the helmet, right into the helmet of the receiver. This is an incomplete pass, by the way, but also a spearing foul, helmet to helmet, and a disqualification consideration, and I hope that you guys have some real dialogue on this this year. Play number 18, and this is the last of the plays where you want to consider a disqualification, and I'm going to let some of the announcement go on this play after it's over. You can see it's a punt returner, defenseless, and the guy comes in. You can see he's wobbly. In fact, he's leaving the game for his own concussion, but you need to consider having him leave the game permanently. That's a perfect 10 by number 10, Shane Tanabe. Wow. And Tanabe looks like he got his bell rung as well. I mean, he got, he was a little goofy when he was walking to the sidelines. I mean, he took a, that was a shot. That looked like it was helmet to helmet. I mean, it certainly sounded like it, and Glad to see both those boys jump up, but always scary. Yeah, that's yeah, scary. He's shaking that one off. That's uh, here's a look. So if we're going to jump on board and try to start protecting these players from themselves and helping the coaches to coach these guys to get their helmets up, get their head to the side, then we're going to have to start calling these fouls, and we're going to have to start considering sending guys to the bench as a result of this type of flagrant contact. It's a philosophy change this year on my clinic tapes, but I hope it's something that opens up discussion and dialogue within your association. That's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.